Hi, I'm Steve, Editor-in-Chief of the blog. The European Court of Justice has recently ruled that Luxembourg's legislation on the cost-sharing exemption has been transposed too widely. This VAT exemption is widely used by the country's financial services industry, as it allows companies to achieve scaling benefits by pooling some services, like HR, IT or marketing, without this triggering extra VAT charges. The impact of the decision for the Luxembourg's financial sector would likely to be severe. I'm joined today by Frédéric Versant, PwC's VAT leader, to understand how this decision is about to rock the boat. Hi Frédéric, and thank you very much for joining us today. The court said that Luxembourg interpreted VAT Directive too broadly. What does it mean exactly? Well, the EU VAT Directive provides an exemption for services supplied by so-called independent groups of persons. Originally, the Directive wanted to avoid VAT being charged on services and resources put in common by companies or persons who could not recover the tax. Well, this is the case, among others, for professions and industries like the financial sector. The text of the Directive is relatively short and there is little guidance on how to operate it in practice. Luxembourg interpreted in a certain way and set a series of implementing measures which were supposed to allow its use by the financial sector in a practical way. Now the Commission thought that these measures were too wide in scope and did not ensure a proper application of the EU text. The EU Court followed the Commission's opinion and ruled against the Luxembourg regime, which now jeopardizes most of the cost-sharing arrangements currently in place in the banking, the asset management and the insurance sector. Does it mean that the companies that use cost-sharing exemptions will have to charge their services or products at 70% now? And will this decision have retroactive effects? Well, this is indeed the most important questions we have to answer right now. If the Luxembourg decree and circular are repealed and no practical solution is found in the short term, the consequence could be that all intra-group charges become taxable at 17%. There shouldn't be a retroactive effect though, and maybe a grandfathering period will be agreed. The companies which use these arrangements will anyway need a certain delay to assimilate and implement the changes. But the delay could be relatively short. Is there any alternative to cost-sharing exemptions? Well, there are very few alternatives in fact. First, we need to see how the current rules could be modified by a new regime that could accommodate the judgment. IGPs are quite flexible and allow to make use of the directive's exemption without requiring too heavy changes in the organization. In some particular case, the IGP could be replaced by other arrangements. And finally, a VAT grouping could be implemented into Luxembourg law, which would in certain circumstances allow to mitigate the VAT leakage within a group. The VAT grouping provision of the UVAT directives allows national tax authorities to treat a group of closely connected companies as a single taxable person and disregard the transaction within that tax unity. VAT grouping already exists in most EU countries and major financial sectors like London, Dublin, Frankfurt and Amsterdam. But this is not the panacea either. It is not so flexible, can be quite heavy to implement and manage has potential downside effects for some members and does not work on a cross-border basis. So finding the right set of tools is the next challenge. Thank you, Frederick, and thanks for watching.